meeting the airport commission at 4.03 p.m. on the 21st of September. The first item on the agenda is the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion. Any discussion? Any opposed? I don't see anyone in the room. One in the room. I don't know if they want to. The ways hand function is the digital hand. Okay. If, if so, are you interested? Public forum today. You would want to be able to attend a list. So. Hello, George. Hey, Nick, we can't, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything either. Test, do the test mic. Hello, this is the Burlington Airport. That's better, Nick. That's much better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Okay. So we are on item four, which is the consent agenda. Do we hear a motion to adopt the contents of the consent agenda? In any second? Second. Discussion or questions on the content of the agenda? Consent agenda? Nick, anything you want to talk about on the employment data? Uh, no, I, I think it's very consistent with what we've talked about in previous uh, meetings. This is July, of course. Um, and uh, we're, we're getting there. Uh, you can see. 46,000 versus the 63,000 July this year over July of last year. Uh, so almost a 40% increase. Uh, granted, that's not our benchmark. And you can see that in the lower graph of the second page graph. Uh, getting towards the yellow line on that graph, which is 2019 pre-COVID, uh, our highest year in uh, the uh, previous decade. So. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, what I really like looking at this is the, the, the seasonality and the consistent cyclical nature of, of those uh, of the graph, uh, meaning things are looking very close to 2019. Very excited. Great. I, I did actually have a couple questions on the employment side. Um, just more curiosities. Of the On the first page, the um, it looks like the, there's a pretty significant drop in the military uh, side of things. Is that, do you know, is that due to the deployment? In, uh, so, and in, in just to reference, the, the operational numbers are one month behind, which, which has that little note there. So right. this is June, uh, over June of 2021. And yes, that was because- Okay, so that's, that's what I thought, just was curious if that's why that dropped so much. Yep, and uh, those military operations are not only the tank and uh, my Army National Guard operations, they also consist of all transient military operations right. as well. Yep, yep. And then on the last page with the garage utilization, uh, it looks like the last 
the last data for 2022 is from April at 87%. And that looks like that's the highest of any of the recorded Aprils. So I'm just curious if that's a concern or if that's getting to a point where we need to be concerned or if that's a really good thing. Um, it is a great thing for us revenue wise. Um, from a customer service standpoint, it is difficult to find spots when we get that high specifically because all of our folks will go out in the morning and parking and then the garage does not get alleviated till the evening before. So for planning purposes, we don't know uh, occupancy counts for the following morning until late the night before. Um, our team watches it closely like by the hour. We have a backend system that tells us all the time, number of transit transactions. We actually know how many are employees and how many are not based on the credentials to get in. Um, it was interesting, and I think we are starting to gather some of the data for May and June to the number of vacation travel weeks and a big reflection of our April numbers we have deduced to the Canadian traffic. It's so oh, okay. up demand as a real piece to that. Right. Okay. Is there a percentage of utilization that where you start to get concerned? Like is that at 80%, 75%? Percent? Oh, okay. So that is what I expect. Okay, so there's still some room there. Okay, good. Good enough. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with Shelby. And, and I think one thing that we need to um, advise our customers is once it hits that 80% mark, like Shelby said, it's very tough to find a parking spot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you got to move around. We are going uh, undergoing a signage plan update for that parking garage. Uh, if you notice, some of them are a little bit older signs and not necessarily pointing or indicating that there's additional parking just ahead or additional parking uh, just above you. Um, so that 80% mark is, is critical. Uh, Shelby's also undergoing a complete parking analysis, not just in the garage. As we start seeing new tenants utilizing parking, uh, as our airlines and concessionaire employee numbers start getting back to where we all uh, they need to be relatively soon, which means more employee parking. Uh, as the hotel comes online, we need to make sure that as we uh, move one area of parking to the other area, to the other area, that domino effect is, is uh, looked at and Shelby's undergoing that utilization study and, and rate study as well. Great, thank you. Is there, um, when, during the winter months, do we remove snow from the upper deck or do we just move it around? We take it out. Yep. So we always have the same amount of parking spaces all year round. Yep. Nobody wants to park up there. No. Yeah. But, yeah. but they can, right? And then so for out in employee parking, we have like the regular one and then we sort of have the overflow that's on the other side of the testing site, right? Correct. And that doesn't look like it usually gets full. And so are all employees parking out there? Are there a certain amount of employees that can park in the garage? The only employees that park in the garage are um, government contract employees who they designate having to have garage spots within their contract. A number of them are GSA, so TSA, FAA, we call it our government agency yeah. location. Yep. Um, and then us employees here, which is usually no more than 12, and we sneak under a ramp in a little hidden spot. Okay. Uh, historically, over the last couple of years, we have allowed uh, all airport employees to park in the garage during winter months. Our utilization does go down, and there's, there's right. a usually parking available. And it allows a better efficiency with our snow crews to clear the surface lots a little bit easier. Um, we are undecided yet if that's going to happen this year. We want to make sure that we're not hitting 87% uh, as we go into the winter months, which we most likely will not. So, Ben, any thought to uh, perhaps having a link on the website that when we when you get to that 87 or Shelby starts to sweat at 93, there's yeah. there's something that pops on the website that encourages people to carpool or taxi or I realize that 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 is a double-edged sword in terms of the income but it wouldn't populate until it was needed yeah yeah she's she's gonna pull it up ah so uh one of the cool improvements we did to our website we were able to integrate with the parking system so it does say live in that banner um the percent 
full of the love, but I do understand what you're saying. It's like, hey, you know, allow for extra time for parking if you do intend it over a certain percent. I think that would actually be helpful in this section. I agree. Yeah, right now it would be 9%. So, so this is our public website. Um, so it constantly shows the utilization in there as well. But but you're right, maybe utilizing it a little bit the uh, banner format um, to say, hey, get here two hours early, find your spot. Because sometimes it's going to be Is there off airport parking? Well, I, mean, I, think that we, I mean, not that we own, um, but even like, are there any yeah, like, little uh, private lots for, and stuff? What, what's the. Uh, the, 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 the car wash yeah. place that's they not still an air they still have yeah. but at 12 bucks a day they can't be really that much cheaper than us right um yes but then you have to wait for a shuttle and have it pre-arranged yeah yeah, yeah, just yeah. Increase to nine or ten dollars right so i'm just saying it's so a, good. yeah <laughs> it's not a huge we have covered parking secure parking lighting parking with a fire alarm system in right across from right <laughs> But you don't do you heard it. But for three bucks. <laughs> three bucks. <laughs> Good. If you're saying for you know 10 days, that'd be $30. <laughs> Does that bring us to five point one. All right. Any other comments or questions on the on the employment data? If none do uh, so we have the motion on the floor. All those in favor of adopting the contents of the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. That concludes the consent agenda. Uh, we are on to action items, 5.01, parking garage, great timing. Uh, do I hear a motion to recommend the execution of a contract with MEI for parking garage improvements and the approval of a related budget amendment? So moved. One second. Second. All right. All right. Uh, Nick, do you want to take this one? Um, Larry's on Larry's line, too. Yeah, Larry and Dave Carmen are on line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, this basically includes the total replacement of the lighting and alarm system in the parking garage, all floors. Um, it's in way past due. It's 25 years old. A conduit, everything will be replaced. And, and also, we'll, we'll see an effect of 50% less energy usage in the parking garage, up to 50%. Up to 50 percent less energy which equates to about 40 ish percent on the expense side as well is that that that's correct right larry <laughs> yeah, yeah about forty thousand. yeah well yeah we're estimating that right now obviously we'll know when we get this project done all right commissioners any questions i think just the obvious is obviously we take over time to just make up the difference in the what we're going to have to spend updating, right? Yeah, years. Years. Yeah, years. Yeah. Uh, I think the bottom line for us is the energy savings that we're going to get out of that to make sure that we're hitting um, local uh, and certainly city Burlington energy goals. Um, that's a small portion of that, that project. Uh, more importantly, we need to make sure that it's a little bit brighter and of course the fire alarm system is, is uh, an, an absolute requirement yeah, yeah yeah so this is something we already budgeted for anyway it was no it was it's obviously no maintenance so uh, originally 27 we years were, old <laughs> yeah originally we were not going to move forward with this entire contract this particular year phasing of the project so it is going to take some time uh but through the american rescue plan we're able to okay, complete we this yep. uh, right now yep. and Get ourselves back on track to uh, uh, approximately half a million dollars a year into the parking garage for normal maintenance for traffic repairs. So it's being paid for at least the rescue plan funds. What does it mean when you say that, therefore, an increase to the grant revenue is requested? So um, when I present the, the budget, it's balanced. My expenses and my revenue is balanced. So one of the things I I did not need to budget all of the um, American Rescue Act grant money to balance the budget when we put it through and had it approved. We knew that we wanted to do this project. We had originally thought we might have to phase it over a couple of years. So we had bids that had come in like over the summer and stuff. So the budget was already done. And then we have savings do it all up front as opposed to um, 
facing it. It's it's better to do it that way. It's better for our for our patrons and just get it done. But also we have an opportunity because we have these funds. We're able to draw them down. Um, and so you know, even if I use like the garage revenue, so to speak, to cover this, I can then I can at least use the American Rescue Act to cover other expenses that are normal that are already approved. So it's just a balancing act. I can't just ex I can't just increase my expense budget. I have to have a way to offset it. Okay. Does, the, uh, does the contract include anything for security cameras? No, that's... Um, no. Just wondering if that was uh, something that was discussed. I know that uh, there's been an increase in crime throughout the region. People are out there at different times, employees uh, and uh, customers. Just wondering if, if it's something that should be considered at this time. When we did the garage parking uh, installation upgrade in 2019, we did redo all of the cameras and conduit for the entrances, exits, and all the vestibules were done in 2021, actually by MEI as part of our security upgrade um, when we had done the whole terminal. So everything that is related to the security cameras is 2019. Uh, we, we also installed um, very similar to UVM or, or college campuses, uh, blue light emergency buttons uh, from here all the way to the employee parking lot, which has 360 degree cameras, as well as an immediate call to our police department uh, station right here. In the parking garage, I agree. We do need to plan for additional cameras to be installed in there uh, over time. Um, and that will certainly come, come this way um, over the years. I don't know which year uh, at this point. I want to make sure that, that structurally, code wise, uh, that we're, we're up to speed. Uh, I think we're Great. Any other conversation on this topic? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. We move on to item 5.02, which is to recommend the purchase of an electric sweeper and to, and to approve the related budget effort. Do we hear a motion to that effect? So move approval. And the three of you want to second that. <laughs> second. No, none of us want a second. All right. Can't Just, be the mover of the motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, two of the three yes, of you are going to be done. I don't know. All righty. Point, point of order before we start sure. to discuss that. I just, uh, I do recall someone mentioning in, in a, maybe it was Shelby, because you were, this hand was out and you were taking the minutes last time, and that the minutes sometimes can be difficult to determine who seconds things and, and such. So we should. Try to make an effort. To All right, that's a great observation. I will, I will, I will do that going forward. So I'm going to say Jeff made. <laughs> I'm mean, arbitrarily pick Jeff because okay. there's three, three of you simultaneously said you would do it. So we'll, we'll pick Jeff there. And do I have a second for that? Second. That will be Helen. All right. And Shelby, can you lead us on this one, please? Absolutely. So this is a con, uh, compact sweeper that is fully electric. Um, it will be replacing the current sweeper we have that is not fully electric and has reached the end of its useful life. Um, this is environmentally friendly uh, machine. Uh, it's going to save us up to 85% of energy costs that we currently have now and 70% of maintenance costs. It not only is a sweeper that will be used in front of the terminal in the parking garage, but it has um, wet back technology and uh, which helps with dust mitigation as they're sweeping in addition to large uh, back system on it that will help us get in between the rows for better functionality if we pick up and things like that which um, therefore helps with drains and things of that kind as we move into the winter and then spring. Um, this was something that our maintenance team had brought forward to us and a demo had come in that they had arranged to have come up and this was the perfect equipment and uh, we really supported all of their effort that they brought forward and having done the research to have this presented to you all today. 
Have any discussion? It is the I'm I'm guessing the infrastructure is in place for the charging of the back. Absolutely, okay. yes. Um, it's actually going to be stored inside in one of our maintenance garage bays. It's all set in conveniently where our airport electrician reports to in the morning as well. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm thrilled that it's all electric. We're we're more than happy to uh, demo it with uh, South Point and DBW as well. <laughs> uh, our, I know our DBW team uh, uh, in Burlington demoed it as well, and this is what it looks like on the screen. But uh, uh, I think it's really amazing. We're going to, of course, brand it. It's it is very much in the public spotlight, and uh, um, it, it really is a multifunction tool that is going to be extremely useful in our uh, in our garage. How much more expensive was it, Nick? And the, and what's the payout in terms of our payback? Yeah, so ours was a, was difficult. We had pretty significant height limitations that we had to work with. Um, we have, I think, a seven foot limitation in a very specific spot in our parking garage, so we had to meet that spec uh, in this in this particular model. Um, this one, uh, as you can see in the memo, was two hundred ninety thousand dollars, and we received about a sixty thousand dollar discount because it was a demonstration model. Uh, we were one of the three airports that they demoed so far, uh, so it was it was extremely attractive um, for this. Uh, certainly, versus any diesel or any fuel um, um, products, uh, and very limited in selection on any other electric to this uh, to this comparison. But was it like 20% more expensive or I mean that's often the like pushback you know like it's just more expensive to start with. I, I don't know. I don't know because we only look for electric vehicles. Um, so okay. I'm not sure what, what that uh, Okay. Difference. Thank you. I was just curious. So I had a question about the budget transfer, Marie, that this is coming out of the airfield mm -hmm. CapEx. Is, is there something that was going to be done in the airfield that may now not be done? Not necessarily. Okay. I when, when I put together the budget, I budget a half, half a million in capital. And I just sort of, I, I kind of go, well, historically, okay. a lot of times we see more of that in the airfield side of it. And um, I put this together, I put that together and sort of said that and know that we can move it around if something, if we find that we're gonna go ahead for, because we have lots of things we'd like to buy and it's about, it's about deciding on the highest priority. So we do go through that exercise internally. So that's why I'm moving it. Okay, I'm just thinking it's- The money was there, which is, yeah, different. Okay. It's, yeah. it's early in the fiscal year to make an adjustment in that sense. So I just kind of caught my eye, Yeah. so. Okay. Any other discussion? There are none of those in favor, please be signified by saying aye. 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 That carries item 5.03 is the Beta Valley West apron lease to Beta Technologies. Do I hear a motion to recommend approval of the lease? Motion approval. All right, so that was moved by Gray. Do I hear a second? Second. That was seconded by Helen. Uh, discussion to be led by Nick. Another exciting milestone, I think, uh, for uh, an area of the airport that's been vacant for uh, a long time. So what we refer to as the Valley West Apron uh, lease uh, was constructed uh, over 10 years ago with federal funding. Uh, that is a general aviation ramp. It'll remain a general aviation ramp uh, open to any uh, GA uh, operator. Uh, Beta Technologies, through a request uh, uh, request for uh, lost my words there, request for proposal um, or a uh, uh, commercial uh, real estate advertisement. Sorry. Uh, was the only respondent to that particular site. We advertised multiple locations. One was in Old Quarry area, the second was the Valley West Apron, and the third was uh, up in the Northwest Quadrant of our airfield. Uh, Beta was uh, the sole respondent in a 2019 advertisement. We 
difficulties, we started in negotiations. Uh, since then, we are now working with Burlington Technical Center and um, other alternative sites for the larger technical program, uh, inclusive of this Valley West apron. Uh, however, uh, we, we now have a deal with uh, Beta Technologies for two-phase project. One is a approximately 25,000 square foot facility uh, with a second phase over 60,000 square feet uh, in addition to it. This is simpler than the manufacturing site. Uh, there is no rent credit associated with this location. Uh, this is fair market value for the ground. We reduced the footprint of the original request to allow opportunities from other entities like the tech school and other uh, private entities that are also interested in this location currently. Um, and uh, uh, and, our, and uh, I would like to move forward with, uh, with this lease. Um, sure. It's a nominal ground rent. Uh, we do have very specific requirements associated with milestones. Um, associated with a phase two build out, which is the 65,000 square foot um, additional location. This is a 30 year lease. And if they hit those milestones on the second phase, they have the option for two extensions one a 10 year, one a nine and a half to keep it under a 50 year, which um, is related to um, transfer tax uh, requirements, which we do not want to get into. Uh, these old improvements, we also have a capital reserve account associated with this uh, that, um, towards the end of the lease in case we need to maintain or demolish the, the building at the end. The building does come uh, to the airport at the end of the lease, uh, and there are normal escalation clauses with CPI uh, within the range of 2 to 6 percent. Um, Uh, the building is going to be used for a couple of uh, purposes. It is a general aviation storage location, and eventually it'll be site location for their electric aircraft to store inside of this hangar. The second phase will be their culture center, uh, which will be a little bit larger as far as height goes, uh, location for education of electric aircraft and education of what Beta is doing, um, uh, why and how they're doing. Uh, as well as an additional hangar space. These are the types of hangars that we need at this airport. 20 to 25,000 square foot facilities are exactly what we need. Uh, so super excited to see data expand in that particular area as we continue uh, negotiating with other entities as well. So is this, sorry, can I talk to you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I know where I am in the process. Um, so do they, I don't know how big the West Valley ramp is. How big is it? So if we're talking 25,000, is that a quarter of it, half of it, all of it? It's none of the apron. Um, it's the, what they're developing is next to the apron. The apron is about four acres, but it's not using the apron. It's using the adjacent um, grass area where they're building. So it's Right, we cannot rip up the apron. There's some there's some pieces of the apron very, very close. Of course. So the apron where we've stored F-16s, we've stored snow clouds and all that stuff is not what we're talking about. That is the apron, but they're building I'm, adjacent to that. Apron. Right, but they're not building on the apron. The apron remains the same. Got it. Okay, so where is, do you have, do we have an airport picture? Are you looking for a, a drone map or something? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, or Nick, you can go to my last page of my construction report. It shows some of it. Shows the beta development. Perfect. So uh, here's our terminal building over over to the side there. Um, over to the side, Valley West Apron is 
uh, almost to the very southern point of the airport, Heritage Aviation, <laughs> Aerodyne, uh, uh, excuse me, Aviatron, Pratt and Whitney, all over here. Valley West Apron, that four acre yep. uh, actual uh, site right there, which actually used to be wetlands. Uh, it was about 30, 30 feet deep right there, uh, wetlands that was filled in and the new apron was created, again, all with federal funding. So adjacent to that apron, and I'll bring up the map in just a second, is the location of the new building. Uh, that building right there, just to compare, is about 12 and a half, uh, 12,500 square feet. So it's about twice the size, uh, size of the Vermont Flight Academy building. Um, and smaller than these, these buildings over here, those are approximately 30,000 square feet. But there wouldn't be anything else available over there if they control that base. No, uh, no there would be, there would be. And I'm, I'll bring up that site plan. Can you see the manufacturing facility this map? Um, you can actually. If he moves it down just a little bit on the other side of the um, of the main table, right there. See the far right? Yep, that's it. Of course, it's much more built up no. now. Sorry, I'm clicking around a lot because the zoom link is right. It will. It will. It's tax avoidance. So here's the uh, lease uh, lines for this particular site. Uh, so again, Pratt and Whitney is this building right here, Heritage Aviation over here, all of our taxiways, runway systems into this four acre ramp space right here. The building is in section A right there. So that's the size of the building. Uh, this is the option. So if they hit those milestones on the additional 65,000, then they get the option to build out this uh, particular site. Uh, we purposely, originally the lease went all the way to the taxiway. We purposely reduced that location. Uh, that's about 125 feet from the service road. So even further from the taxiway to site an additional building as well as additional space up here. On our master plan, this entire section up top here also is new GA apron space. So this ramp does get extended over, over time uh, as part of our capital plan. Uh, you can see the, the depth of the building here, the depth of the building approximately, and it's not gonna take up the entirety of, of section B there, but the depth of the building equivalent to that one. The, behind that building is the Vermont Flight Academy. And there's additional space to build right here and off to the side over here. These are actually the sites that we are looking at um, with the technical college um, uh, to see if those are viable options. You mean the technical center? Sorry, technical center. I know it gets very confusing. <laughs> BTC, BTC, BFA, it's all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the so the first site that they're proposing though would have a great deal of traffic across the apron. So whoever, if it was someone else, like Burlington Technical Center on the other side, they're all going to have to collaborate on all the movement of the airplanes on the apron. You got it. Right. So, Which is exciting because, like I said, this apron has been very underutilized for the last 10 years. Uh, right now, we have one aircraft, small aircraft, that's, uh, I believe, not airworthy right now, parked on that way. Uh, so this is a huge opportunity for the airport to to make sure there's some momentum behind this, this particular apron, not just with one entity, but for various entities. And, so, and this entire apron must remain common use. There are no, that's why none of this lease area contains apron space for bad technologies. There's preferential space. Obviously, we're not going to allow somebody to park in front of the hangar, right? right. Uh, but there's no space associated with um, the apron. Right. right. So. This is a came back in, in 2019, but my understanding from Burlington Technical Center was that they also put in a request Correct. for a lease. That was recently. That was uh, just within the last year. Yeah. yeah. So, but 
So what what is the status of that request? Is that not in this request? I, would, I don't know if I would comment on that tonight. I think that would have to go to an executive session to talk about these negotiations. Um, uh, but it seems like if Beta on. has the middle and they also have the option for the side, then Burlington Technical Center doesn't have an option for a lease. They, they do. There's huh. multiple options on this for the technical center. Where? There's there's the entire north side. There's the 125 feet on the south side. There's additional space on. Wait, the 125 feet. feet, but they're talking about 25,000, right? Or am I reading this? Square. Am I losing it? Square feet. Yeah. So, and you're talking about 125 feet. Yeah. That doesn't seem to be a comparison. So this 25,000 square foot facility, which my understanding from the technical school is what they're looking for as well can fit right here as well. It can also fit here or down here. There's multiple options to put a similar size building on this site. So that's sort of the grassy area above VFA. That's right. That, the top of that. Right. Yeah. Nick, I can also add a 25,000 square foot building, if it was on just one floor, which this potentially might not be, would be 160 by 160. So 125 is plenty. And then you got longer length there too. So it would back up to the taxiway, Larry. It would, tack, it would back up to golf. Well, we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're not far enough along in the siting of the technical college to really talk about the details. I, I, that's what we're doing right now with this school is, is identifying the appropriate locations for the lease of the technical college. There are, which we'll talk in executive session later tonight, there are other alternatives that, I, that are much viable. Uh, we're working with Superintendent Tom Flanagan to make sure that uh, those options are, are really what we're looking for here. But I don't think anybody knows that this lease is on the agenda. Uh, I, I mean, this was a publicly advertised meeting. This this was a meeting advertised at the Board of Finance. Uh, there were media attention uh, associated with this. Uh, in the technical college, has seen these matters. I'm sorry, the technical Right. I, I feel that there's going to be a lot of um, people that from the general aviation community that feel like they will not have a space in this center. I mean, we were just on a discussion today in the manufacturing summit that talked about this, you know, Patrick Leahy, $10 million academic center of excellence. And this, 25,000 square foot facility is not that, right? This is just for beta. This is just for their electric this, aircraft, just for their training. It does not include BFA or Burlington Technical Center or anybody else. Correct. Is that correct? This is just another piece of beta. This is a private investment by beta. Now, beta has been at the meetings trying to invest and in, have the conversations with BFA. Uh, the, the technical center, uh, as well as their own needs um, at, as part of this facility. Um, uh, but those are not by negotiations on how beta coordinates their procedural and uh, operational needs between those entities. We are at the table to make sure that we can do everything that we can help with. Um, our hope right now, and in fact, we are supporting the technical center by providing $700,000 to start that siting plan and start the design. Uh, this um, grant uh, came to us uh, without the airport knowing about it as well. Uh, we were, that's why we need to work with the technical center and, and the school. We need a site plan. We need a, we need uh, everything associated with uh, what any private entity or investor at the airport uh, needs to accomplish. Um, uh, and we're, we're extremely excited to see data developed in this area. Uh, extremely excited to see another 25,000 square foot hangar being sited at this area. 
and still have the opportunities. Like I said, we redacted these square footages to make sure that there are opportunities on this location. This is a massive acre right here. There are opportunities for additional expansion by other entities. Nick, if I'm just so that I understand correctly, on the map that's on the screen, uh, area A is the 24,000 square foot building with the associated parking. Correct. Area B would be the possible expansion of a 65,000 square foot if they, if they meet those milestones. Is area B, would, would is, is that 65,000 square feet that's showing there as area B or is that? <laughs> That is uh, 55, five, four, nine. Okay. Okay. So it's possible though that area B, if they don't meet the milestones, will become available for someone else. That's correct. And they have a very quick time frame. They only have a few years to design, permit, develop, and make sure those milestones are met uh, right away. Very, very strict guidelines. Otherwise, that area B is available for public advertising. Great, thank you. And what about the other area? The area, area that you said is not designated around the corner of the Everything outside of this hashed area is available for a public hearing. No, because the, the issue with this $10 million grant is that Burlington Technical, their, their high school is shut down. They don't have any room. They have to find a place and it has to be now. They can't wait for five years for them not to make their, make their potential. And um, so if what you're saying is there's still room, there's still plenty of room for that size and they could apply for, for that, then, um, then that gives them somewhere else right. to go. I, I do want to make clear to that. I, I've publicly stated before that I don't think the technical centers, that is not my first choice for the technical center. Uh, they're not moving planes as often, and they, especially when they add in other program elements like auto and high bay uh, uh, technical programs, those cannot be located on an airfield. So we have to be very careful on how we cite this, uh, not only with the requirements of the grant through the, the EMR program, but also through our requirements for the FAA. There are much better locations on this airfield on this airfield that will take that ten million dollars hopefully twice as far yeah. with the technical center. But I think that the whole idea was that Burlington Technical Center with their aviation maintenance program and Vermont Technical College with our two-year maintenance program and our four-year pilot program and our partnership with Vermont Flight Academy we would now have mechanics working with the flight school, working with the college to all work together. And if the mechanics aren't next to the airplanes, then it doesn't work. Right. But what you're saying is that when the Burlington Technical Center opened it up to saying, oh yeah, we're gonna put a bunch of these other, they just kicked themselves right out of the maintenance, the aviation maintenance program, because you can't, you can't by the FAA put those guys on the airport. So they just took themselves off the airport. Kind of, sure. right? I mean, there, because, there's, there's creative ways that we can address that. Um, but that's important for them to know because I don't think anybody knows that. They do. They do. They know uh, that they can't be on the airport? No, no, no. Yes. Uh, unless their program outlines a way, or their curriculum, I should say, outlines a way to address airport needs. When they add, when they add an auto mechanic program, we need that pipeline as well. We need auto mechanics and big, big engine repair mechanics for our equipment. Uh, we have a shortage in labor and sure, sure, sure. this is going to help But you're saying that education component can't happen at that location. I, I said that it's, that's not the best location for it. And, yes, and, yeah. and we have to be very careful where we set those locations to address those happening. No, I get it. But if, if so, if VFA is out of room and they thought, at least by combining with Burlington Technical Center, that the aviation mechanics and the aviation pilots and the training were clearly have to be next to each other in order for them to work on the airplanes that go and do the training, then where does VFA end up in all this? VFA is right where they are. With that, busting what? at the seams with an old building falling down. So I think the idea that we talked about in our collaboration was 
that everybody needs space, everybody's buildings are falling down, and there's nowhere to go. I'd be happy to have this conversation a little bit larger. There's there's larger conversations that we're having with each one of these entities uh, that is outside of this particular release, uh, this particular release that we're talking about. This these two ramps right here have a much larger and, and uh, more appropriate master plan that we're or mini master plan, I should say, that we're working on with the mini entities in this area. Uh, whether we're talking hangar condos from our flight academy new businesses that want to be here beta or the technical college uh, technical center um, there's larger conversations that are happening to negotiate these deals we, we can't just i get you i get you yeah. it's just important to know what's what will be left if anything we are busy <laughs> we're building uh and that's exciting that's that's great uh we can't allow a, a, a ramp to be vacant for 10 years <laughs> I so agree. <laughs> I have the I have the original plans from ten years ago when we when we talked about this. Okay, and, and I get the, you. The opportunity for this ten million dollars is absolutely outstanding. Um, so there there are uh, in and hopefully there will be additional context during our executive sessions at night uh, that will add to the conversation. Gotcha. If that's the case, would it make sense to defer the action on this until we, if, if there's information that's going to be helpful for us? Uh, I would recommend not to do this. This is the ratification of this lease. This lease has been brought to Board of Finance and City Council and has passed. So it's up, it's up to you. I guess I don't know. I don't understand unless there's some Robert's rules issues. What the harm would be in, if, if there is going to be information in executive like session that could help us, and we can intend it, it would just be a reordering of the agenda. I guess. Yeah. If if you say it's important that we act on it tonight, no problem with that. But if there's going to be information that would be helpful for us, I'd prefer I guess to act on it after we have that information. Um, yeah, I, I think that makes sense on the context of the technical center, which is unrelated to this particular use at this time. Uh, as we mentioned, we, we've done everything we possibly can to make sure that this ramp is available to other entities, including the technical center, if this is the appropriate site and location. The, the, uh, the information that I was referencing for executive session really has is pertaining to the technical center, not the beta lease. In fact, I'm not even going to be talking about the beta lease at the executive session. Okay. But, and I do think it's important that there's action taken tonight on this. So, so I, I, could, I could see it both ways that might help the conversation and, and, the, um, and the action tonight. You, you mentioned that the Board of Finance has approved this. Correct. So, uh, in essence, uh, and, and since I'm new, I'm, I'm still not exactly sure about the process and the powers and such. And so, you really have very limited authority to sort of check this, other than maybe tabling it for right now and coming back and seeing it again after executive session, which you said may not be as helpful as we assume for the so, so in essence the, the city has already approved this at least the board of finance and city council and city council so um, really we're just following in line here this uh, as any of the action items on any commission it's it's only a recommendation there's no approval that that needs to occur tonight uh, it, it really is um, a support of these items. Sure. Uh, I guess I. Well, and, and just to clarify that point, most times we as a body will review something before it goes. Yeah. yeah. But there are some circumstances where it goes in reverse order, and this happens to be one okay. of those circumstances. I, I mean, I'm very aware that all of our business is advisory. Um, 
I, I, I'm sure there's other things that I voted on that have already been passed by the Board of Finance and the Council. I just probably wasn't aware of it. I, I was always under the assumption that it was that the, the Board of Finance and the City Council was sort of asked, like, is the, is the commission supportive of this? And that was, so we like to line it up that way. Correct. Sounds like that is the preferred order. A hundred percent. And typically we try to strive to do that. Sometimes the timing doesn't work that way. I get We've it. been yeah. having conversations with Tim to, to see if we can adjust the, the timing of the actual commission meeting. Yeah, no, I get sure that it doesn't right always line up. It'd be helpful, I think, to know that in advance to say, this, you know, FYI, this is already because of timing reasons that it already went to the Board of Finance and the City Council. But yeah, I, that would be how perfect me. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So procedurally, if someone wants to make a motion to table this and redo the agenda so that this comes after executive session, that motion could be made. The commissioners can vote, and if it passes, it would move, and if not, it would stay in its current spot. So. I, I would argue against that. Just um, although, thank you for giving that that clarity on it. Based on what Nick has said, we don't. We're just we're addressing the issue after they have approved it, and we're not going to gain a lot of new information in the executive session. I think Robin has raised some very good points, uh, but at this point, it doesn't. I just don't see that it really matters that much based on the procedure. And the executive session is unrelated to this matter. I mean, it's, there's a tangential relationship, right. obviously, but not we're not talking about anything related to this lease in executive session. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, um, that's correct. I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine voting on it. Um, so let's give it all the time. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor approve, or well, it's not really recommending approval because it already has been approved, but uh, signifying our support for this lease, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Right, thank you. We move now to item 5.04, which is to recommend approval of the, snail, of the sale of snow removal equipment to Heritage Aviation. Do I hear a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. That's been moved. And do I hear a second? Second, I'm sorry. All right. And discussion. This is Dave. How's everybody doing? Good, Dave. Good. Day. Good. Day. Good. Uh, so, this is basically uh, we have three pieces of equipment that the airport has had. Uh, in our inventory, uh, one of which was a, uh, a Chevy uh, 3500 1993, the other one's a 2000 GMC 10, and a 2002 uh, Chevy K3500. And we've uh, used them, uh, uh, put, put them to good use over the last, uh, you know, 20 to 30 years, but uh, they've since, uh, you know, they are, labor, you know, maintenance intensive, and they do, um, you know, uh, uh, take up a lot, a lot of space on our ramp. So we, uh, Heritage has agreed to uh, to purchase them for $25,000. And the, uh, uh, it allows us to, uh, to Heritage to keep up their ramp, uh, which Im improves the uh, usability of their spaces for the aircraft in the winter, in the winter months. Um, the, uh, and occasionally we actually, uh, uh, help them out with clean, cleaning their surfaces. So them having that ability to do that on their own uh, more effectively is going to uh, you know, benefit the airport as well. Thank you, Dave. Commissioners, any comments or questions? What is a total behind super? <laughs> oh, um, so basically what it is, is that it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, a utility truck, you know, it's like a uh, 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 a vehicle that has a uh, uh, was a fifth wheel, right? Is that what they call it? Where the uh, the actual hitch itself is in the bed of the truck, and uh, basically it's just a truck with room attached to the back of it would be a, a a fifth wheel, and that's what uh, it basically sweeps. Uh, that's the functionality of it. Now, 
when I say that they're kind of obsolete and they're, they've been superseded by the multifunction piece of equipment, uh, the multifunction piece of equipment, we actually have five of those right now. And uh, they're a lot more efficient. Um, they, uh, they sweep up a lot more in, in less, uh, less time. It's actually a plow uh, followed by a, a broom followed by an air blast. So you have, instead of just one function of removal, physical removal, you have uh, three uh, methods of removal all at the same time. So these aren't things we've even used for a long time. Yeah. They're just yeah. taking, up, taking up space. Yeah, they're taking up space. I mean, we have used them occasionally, but, uh, you know, for the last couple of years, since we've had, uh, you know, upgraded the equipment, uh, they just, you know, uh, stay on the, on the, uh, in the, uh, over by the shop over there. So it is taking up a lot of our space. Okay. Has, I assume Heritage has agreed to the, the sale price that's been negotiated already. Yes. Any further discussion? Just a quick yes, finance sir. question. So after the sale, where does, does, does this money roll into a specific account? Or it'll just, it'll just come into our, you know, as a miscellaneous revenue sale. And, uh, we'll, look at, we'll look and see if we have any value left on those assets. They're kind of old. So they may be fully depreciated. So I will look at that. It'd be either a gain on the sale of our assets if we, have, if we fully depreciated them, or maybe there's a small residual amount still outstanding. So we'll, we'll remove them remove that and then we no longer have to maintain those equipment or they take up space. So we that money be available to be used for other other items. Good. All right. Uh, all those in favor of, of approving this item, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 5.04 carries. We're now item to item 6.01, which is the construction update from Larry. Um, okay, um, typically um, in December, I'm relieved and be able to say that we're substantially complete with um, all outside construction this year, September, and I'm able to say that. So that's a relief for me and it makes me feel good. Although the tech center or BTC and beta adds more, uh, more of my effort in, in now, so um, so I have nothing more to report than what's on my report, um, and I'm willing to, you know, have, I can ask, answer any questions. So, thanks. Commissioners, any questions on Larry's report? All right, hearing none, we will move on to item. Thank you, Larry. Hearing none, we'll move on to item 7.01, which is the financial update for Marie. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> um, so you have this month's package. We are in our new fiscal year. So you have July, our revenue and expenses for July, and um, including the cash that we had as the end of. Uh, August in our AIP receivable. So um, in there, you know, we're starting off the year. I, I'm pleased with how we're starting off our year. Our revenues are continuing to improve um, month to month. We're seeing strong, strong uh, car rental concession revenues. We're seeing strong CFC revenues and our parking garage is really performing quite well compared to even our pre-COVID numbers. We're actually seeing about 100%. Um, of July this year compared to three years ago. So all of these are, again, showing how uh, the recovery is, is moving along and um, we hope that that continues and we hope to see that. A, on the stimulus grant monies, we continue to use the CARES Act. Um, what we have left of it, we've sort of designated, we're able to use toward our older grants that we're just finishing up some work for that had a match, like had a local share match. And so we're able to use that on that still. Um, we did 
and we're able to draw down, uh, we did our first drawdown on the American Rescue Act. We're waiting for them to approve it, but that money is going to be used to offset our salaries that we had from uh, our last uh, fiscal year that we've just completed up. But we decided to go ahead and do that since we know we have, uh, we have the, these, that is an eligible expense under there, even though we had a very good year, but also, um, this allows us, we have a lot of repairs and maintenance and other things like the garage thing that we just talked about earlier that we have know that we have coming up. And um, we continue to owe about two and a half million dollars in our grant anticipation note that is on one specific uh, AIP grant that we have that we've submitted for a closeout with the FAA. That is our taxiway golf phase two. It's a large, large grant. And we are waiting for the FAA to close it out when they do and, and reimburse us, then we'll pay down grant the grant anticipation note. So our year day revenues uh, were about $2.3 million for the first month of our year, which is which is makes me very um, happy to report actually. And um, I have the metric sheet that we are our new metric sheet that now we're on our third month of using it. So, which is really helpful to kind of see, I like how this demonstrates where we are, where we're heading and how we're getting there. So uh, again, I wanna, I wanna give my appreciation to Tim for you know, sort of coming up with that idea and actually putting it together because it's quite easy to bring that forward. Um, and again, these only go through June. Actually, it does go through July on the dot. If I hover on the dot, it says July, it doesn't show that at the bottom. So. Uh, I, it just, it makes it look like it's through June, but it's through July. So that is, that is all current and up to date. A great, great observation. I did double check that. Um, our expenses for July were just under $900,000. Um, we are running a little bit higher than last year. We did a, a more repair maintenance. So it, sometimes the timing of some of our repairs, we had some things that we had to do. Um, on the airfield and things like that. So sometimes we end up timing wise, we sort of know that these things come to be, see them timing wise, a little bit different. Um, our cash was, was, was again, very solid. We had about six and a half million dollars in our airport checking account. So that is allowing us to pay for, even though we're done our construction on these projects, we're still getting a lot of bills for them. You know, it takes a little bit for them to bill us and so we are going through and doing that. Um, and our AIP receivable, given the size of the grants that we have, um, always, always is, uh, is about $6 million. So that is, again, it's, it's an indication since we spend it, we pay it, and then we get reimbursement. So we do have reimbursements coming in all the time with millions of dollars that we are drawing down and have already gotten some back this month and we'll get some back in the next week or two. So that is just constant flux there, uh, but it's always higher when we have construction going on. So those are, I don't know if anybody has any specific questions <coughs> about any of our line items or any questions in general. Sure. I have just a couple of funny uh, questions. So when we do landing fees here and we collect our $1.7 million, um, is that mostly airline landing fees or does that include heritage corporate traffic and does the military pay anything we don't they're a wash right we already talked about them right and those smaller planes they don't pay landing fees on them we don't have a landing fee here at Burlington directly directly, directly. directly to us oh okay. heritage so heritage pays us for their lease and they collect parking fees at their parking area if we do collect from the airlines we do. We do. Okay. So, so the, all of that is here. There. All of that is 100% commercial operations. I think that's what you're asking. Yeah. Yep. 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 So the nice thing is that even though we have sort of a limited amount of gates, we have an unlimited amount of landing fees as long as we can put them somewhere. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. Um, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tricky conversation to have with the airlines. Right? <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to. Uh, we don't want to have that unlimited amount. We want to justify the rate of a landing fee to uh, to a gain uh, service, right? To a provide slot. that service and to provide the uh, to offset the expenses out on airfield. That's how we get the landing fee. Yeah. Well, ours are 
I'm sure significantly lower than our nearest people that they would pay. Maybe not Plattsburgh, but they don't have a tower. Uh, okay, cool. And then this cash short, is that just a thing that, that comes up if you weren't like getting your grant money in or something else that you had to wait for? Is that where, or is that like a pay cash short? It's like a pay cash short. So we really don't see a lot of activity in there anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is this energy efficient line item, is that something that could be improved when we improve those other like things that we're trying to make the airport more green? Right. Um, you won't on? see the savings there. Our savings, I have savings in my utilities or my electrical costs or things. That's where I, I will have lower bills. Um, and so we'll see that in there. This line item, we added that last year and we will keep adding that. Um, we're very conscientious. As a community, you know, and as an initiative, I think we're all very conscientious about making improvements in sustainability and making improvements in energy, and we all have to do our part. So we are looking at that. We're doing a, a study right now, which we started last year, and that's that's in gear to find ways that we can participate in that smartly and wisely. And then, how do we uh, you know, how do we make investments? What is it called? Like, what do we do next? So we're looking. That's what that energy that line is specific we want to track it we want to show it um and we want to have that as continue to be a part of our conversation yeah yeah because that's i think that's got a lot of traction in our community in general everywhere is right so and our last one is that we're still overseen by the burlington police right we are they provide our security services here yeah um and so when i know that when part of a Burlington police was defunded that also impacted the airport. We didn't have as much oversight, right? We have. We, we, we still have a contract with the Burlington Police Department. So it didn't uh, change. I, um, like the amount of people, the amount of force that we, so we have a line item for airport security to police. Is that ours or is that theirs? No, that's our expense that we to yeah. the Burlington Police. That's department. what I that's thought. That's our contract. Right. So it didn't change. I thought that we kind of suffered from it did the lack of staff. It um, slightly. In fact, Marie did a, a fantastic job making sure that her um, expense and the contract is adjusted according to the, the schedules that are approved. Um, I, uh, I, I just want to be cautious about talking about security. Um, uh, associated with the airport and the, the changes that have occurred. Um, but uh, overall, the police are uh, accommodating um, all hours that they're required to by federal regulation right now. As it affects budget, you haven't noticed anything significant. Correct. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. The question on the land being fees. Uh, and how that is negotiated or whatever. I, I don't want to get bogged down in the weeds, but I'm just wondering if once the new terminal is set, does that mean that landing fees will increase? Because no. you're really providing for a better service and having people come outside and right. such. So I'm just, I'm just curious about that. A timely question. Uh, we, <laughs> we actually met with our airlines today um, we are renegotiating our lease with the airlines, and uh, we've already um, preliminary agreed to an additional five-year extension of our, of our airline lease. Um, that'll come to you, uh, our next meeting is not until November, so it'll come to you later in the year to into next year. Uh, we do have an extension. I uh, don't remember if you were on board, if Robin uh, and maybe Eric were on board, but we do have a one-year extension that we approved to June of 2023. Uh, to give us that time to negotiate. To your point of landing fees, we separate the, the cost centers. Um, it's harder to see on this particular image, but we separate terminal expenses versus airfield business expenses. The airfield side gives us that methodology of creating a landing fee, uh, which will not uh, essentially change. And in fact, I'm not going to, we're going to try to not make that change. Very, very important to to retain with the air service that we have today. In the terminal, uh, to your question, we have a per square footage terminal rental rate. Today is $63 a square foot. 
that's not uh, that's not the same as a regular commercial square footage rate. You usually have a commercial building that you're looking at 10 to 15 dollars a square foot. Uh, so this is a significant amount, but that's taken from the expense of operating this terminal. When we expand the terminal, we need to make sure that's accounted for as well. But again, we're trying to make sure that we're we're coming up. Um, even as far as uh, how we negotiate and what the rate itself is going to be with the airlines. Uh, when we add square footage to that, that number that we divide the terminal by the square footage number, obviously that number increases. So theoretically, the rate will decrease to make sure that we can maintain the same revenue, although we need to increase that revenue source just a little bit to make sure that we can maintain that revenue as well. Okay. Any further discussion? I have one item, oh. one other item that Go didn't right make it on my report because it's that new. So um, we were we get reviewed by Moody's um, and Fitch Rating, Fitch Rating Agency during the year. But Moody's just just requested information to go ahead and update. They were reviewing our airport. And so we complied with that, provided all the information, um, and they issued an opinion. And that I haven't even seen the final copy of it. It's that's how new, but they reaffirmed, they rated us BAA. Um, they reaffirmed our rating and um, with a stable outlook. So we're exactly the same. We haven't gone up, we haven't gone down. Um, and uh, that is just that just became public. So I've got to go and see the actual final. We get a draft of the opinion, but I didn't. Feel that's I'm not supposed to share the draft. So when I get that, I'll share that with everybody. Right. But just hot off the press. Uh, hot off the press and a lot of work by Marie. Uh, she she put together a significant amount of um, information for movies to to make sure that they can analyze us um, and, and report back to us, which which I think is a really positive step. I think re retaining that rating uh, despite not even being back up to pre-COVID numbers is really and the impact of that is that when we go out to borrow money, it's a better rate than you got to refinance over there. Exactly. Which we're not planning on doing. Uh, right, I understand. Nice to know. <laughs> it is nice to know. So for historical context, if we compare to say pre-COVID, how many notches are we different? So Moody's did not change our rating during okay. COVID. So okay. we've maintained, which is great. We've maintained our, our um, same. Okay. They, I, uh, yeah, I think they even kept us a stable outlook. I have to look back. Fitch have put us at a negative outlook, but didn't reduce us, but now is back up to stable. Okay. So, but Moody's, Moody's took a longer term view and didn't, didn't um, lose confidence, I will say, you know, when COVID really the impact. So that was good. Okay. But it's, it's, it's hard as. You know, what you, what you just got is Moody's though, right? Moody's, yeah. So they sort of approach us and say, like, hey, we'd like to do this now. Okay. Once every couple of years. Oh, no. Um, Moody's will typically ask for information. Some Sometimes, especially because of COVID, they've been asking as much as twice a year. A lot of times it's only once a year. Had them once a year. But because of COVID, they've been asking for more data um, and information. But they just had, Moody's had also... Fitch reviewed us in March, and um, Moody's reviewed us in March as well because we were going to refinance our bonds. So this is really about what, seven months after they, or six months after they reviewed us the last time. Great. Anything else for Marie? All right. Thank you. We'll move on to item. Eight, which is or eight point oh one, which is noise data. You know, this is yours. So uh, we received about ninety two more comments since July, which is when this was last reported. Uh, so forty four hundred thirty five uh, cumulative comments on our feedback portal, um, and also an update. Um, Next month, Spectre will be coming to uh, recalibrate the noise monitors um, that are in Williston, South Burlington, and uh, Winduski. So that will hopefully um, just uh, uh, make sure that any um, 
that everything is completely accurate and showing as it should be reading correctly. And Hannah, they're also going to repair the Winooski one that was damaged at the same time they're doing the uh, calibrating of the monitors. Okay. That was going to be my question. That was going to be fixed as well. So <laughs> yeah. good to know. Do you know when that's happening? Sorry. Did I, just uh, I think they're going to be here October 19th to 21st. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have had some comments um, uh, by Burlington, by a Burlington resident to add to this report. So we'll, we'll work with you to see if we can add change. Uh, some of the reporting uh, collected from the uh, data. Um, I do, do want to say as well that we recently received our first bill for our annual um, accommodation of these noise monitors, which is almost $50,000 a year. Um, and uh, so I said that so it's the first year that we've seen. So when you say accommodate, what do you mean by accommodation? By, by hosting the noise monitor, by, uh, by uh, yeah, by hosting the noise monitor. So we, we now, out of our operating budget, pay $50,000 a year for the noise monitor. To, to, to be on um, though that is not part of the grant that so those are going to be continuous plus any cost of, of fixing it. Uh, I think that's important to, to, to make sure that we're just tracking those costs. Great. Commissioners, any other comments? All right, so move on to 9.01. Commissioner's items. Uh, there is one item which I'll start with. So I think we've talked about this maybe very briefly a couple of months ago, but this commission operates under a procedures and rules document. So newer commissioners, I know you've seen that as part of the welcome packet. Jeff, we left last looked at this last summer. Um, but Greg had rightfully pointed out that a lot has changed since since those have since the document has been put together. So in the next couple months, we're gonna take a look at that. And now that many new commissioners had a little seasoning of what it's like to be on the commission, we definitely wanna get your input as to how this body should operate. Um, I prefer not to take formal action until we have our right to know orientation because I feel like there's something we might learn from that. Uh, and possibly wait until the seventh seat is filled by Burlington, although that seems to be taking a while. So we may go ahead and, and uh, they already appointed that, right? no, the seventh seat, there is not an appointment <laughs> for the, for the seventh seat. So, uh, but needless to say the process will be, I'll, I'll put a document out there. Greg has, or, I'm sorry, Eric has already put thoughts out on what that should look like. I think you forward to me some comments from the city attorney. So I will meld those together and it's really a collaborative document. So feel free to modify and suggest, and then eventually we'll wordsmith it all together and we'll bring it to this body and, and hopefully approve it. So just so stay tuned. For if that. I understand, we have the regular document and then do we have a draft document that you're working on? There, there is one that Eric has done some work on, the city attorney. But, it, but it's done. accessible, I guess that's the question. Not yet, but it will be. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. And then that will be the one that make we sure can framework from. And, you know, <laughs> okay. Yep. We go from there. So that's just something on the radar. Um, and then any other question or any other commissioner items that anyone wants to bring up at this time? Um, I just have one other one which I didn't put on the agenda, but I just want to recognize that uh, Nick is now our, I don't say permanent, but he's no longer our acting director. He is our director. And so I want to congratulate him on his appointment uh, by, by the mayor and the approval by city council. Uh, and uh, we're excited to that. This is my second day. It's <laughs> day. <laughs> First formal appointment. Me too. Yes. So. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. And it was nice, I saw a little clip on TV, it was nice having your crew there, yeah. you know, uh, so that was, yeah. it was uh, some physically, some digitally. Which I'll explain why they were digitally. It's super helpful to be there and hear those comments. Yeah, absolutely. He would be for sure. And I was, you know, Tim and I were part of the search and, um, um, Dave as well. And I'll just say it was a, it was a really strong candidate pool. And uh, you know, this was not a perfunctory search at all. And um, 
think we got the right person and it says a lot about you that you, thank you. competed against the best people that we could find and, and uh, you're the choice, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So without any prefix and found the word director. <laughs> the director <laughs> first. That's amazing. First word? <laughs> Um, and I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> so just a, a couple of uh, updates. I have a quick list uh, that I usually keep in there. Um, uh, I think it's incredibly important that we, we keep a new snow removal equipment uh, maintenance facility project on, uh, on our eyes and on a conversation. We have now hired a consultant and an engineer to start our design efforts on this new snow removal equipment building. Um, to relocate our crew to the appropriate location with the intent of removing ground vehicles from air ground operations. Uh, uh, on the same token, we have serious needs to expand our cargo operations at this airport. Um, so there's a dual function happening in the geographic locations that I'm referring to, which, which uh, we don't need to dive in today, but moving our folks out of that specific location to expand cargo operations is, uh, is also a critical component to moving um, our snow removal. And we are still looking on the northwest quadrant of this airport. Uh, we have not moved away from that um, generalized location. However, we are looking at working with the, uh, our neighbors and working with the communities to make sure that we're incorporating uh, noise measures, landscaping measures, and accommodations for uh, the community to still uh, utilize um, uh, noise buffer zones, which, which are still residential, um, by relocating and, and looking at alternative avenues still in the Northwest Quadrant, just a little bit further north, north to stay away um, as far as possible from residential neighborhoods. Um, uh, still very early on in the process, like I said, we just hired a consultant engineer team uh, to start the design work and make sure that the uh, feasibility is, is uh, appropriate. Uh, many terminal projects that are happening very, very quickly over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm happy to report that we are on schedule for a soft opening of the terminal integration project. And in fact, this I guess technically will be the a soft opening and press conference and event, which we would love to invite all of you to on October 6th at 10 a.m. Uh, that would be, like I said, a soft opening. Uh, the facility will not yet be secured, not yet be operational, but our hope is to invite uh, all of our airline partners, invite our TSA agents, have them with us at the press conference. Senator Leahy, as well as Mayor Weinberg, will be there. Uh, to officially cut the ribbon um, and the TSA agents will be standing behind the new brand new equipment. Uh, many people have never even experienced using this equipment through airports. They'll be behind those that uh, people can actually see and, and kind of mock a, a piece of luggage going through and ask questions, etc. And then an open house, really explore the building on your own. You don't need a ticket. You don't need to have a visitor pass. Uh, it's not a secured area at that point in time. The following week, October 10th, will be the official day. Uh, we didn't want to cram it all into one day because on that day, we will be relocating existing equipment as a terminal right now into this site so that on October 11th, this will officially be the new security checkpoint of the airport. Uh, that is right around the corner, uh, two weeks away, just about two weeks away from this October. Uh, super exciting. Once that happens, it is very intrusive right now. I don't know if you've flown out recently or gone down, downstairs. Extremely intrusive to construction. We're no longer in a private area to construct this. Now we're inside of our terminal. The lines downstairs are a little, little shifted around, and, and the exit points are a little shifted around. Uh, we do have signs, and I'll continue to say, please, please pardon our appearance as we're under construction. Um, uh, but after October 11th, the queuing lane, the checkpoint open, and then we'll start renovating the old security checkpoint, which will be able to expand our queuing space even further. Uh, that will be completely renovated probably around in November. 
uh, time frame. So phasing of the opening of the project, but officially open uh, just in a couple of weeks. So TSA goes through all of their training in advance of that, obviously. What's really amazing is originally we weren't planning on uh, bringing new equipment into the building. We were going to be using existing, which I guess is a kind of catch on too, right? They're already used to this, to this uh, equipment. Um, but because TSA was able to farm new equipment, get it operational and certified, it's been certified for about a month now. Uh, so TSA agents have been uh, training uh, since then. Would, like, for the first few days, will the others still be available if there's glitches or anything? Or we're sort of, it's a, it's a hard um, one. If, yes and no. Uh, uh, not all of the equipment. So the big, the big machines that they have, the actual luggage, yeah. uh, piece of luggage goes through, those will stay there for a little while. They're not going to, it's not going to be usable really because that because the x-ray machines that you put your arms up and other things those will be relocated those are the things so that it's going to work and it'll be checked out it needs to work okay. so we should bring a lot of luggage for the soft open to make sure, <laughs> to make sure it works um, <laughs> the good part is they're only going to do one checkpoint at a time so they'll they'll take the machines from the let's just let's say the north i can't remember but that's the first one move it into this area Make sure two of these lanes are operational. The old two lanes will still be operational in the south, and we'll open those two lanes. Got it. Up. So it'll, it'll transition to make sure that uh, we'll always have two lanes available until we have more. Two. And uh, it's going to go very soon. No doubt. <laughs> uh, right after October uh, 11th. <laughs> When we start raising our uh, terminal renovations. That's a $2 million renovation project happening that is completely outside the funding of this particular building. That's new funding sources. That's where two new automatic exit lanes come into play. Uh, so we don't always have to uh, station any of Shelby's ambassadors teams at the exit doors from now on. They are automatic exit lanes. There's a lot of there's, there's other features in there. Um, the, the whole footprint of that North Concourse does shift uh, pretty dramatically. Um, uh, it also opens up expanded space. Uh, Skinny Pancake and Hudson News have been absolutely outstanding to look at their footprint, to look at what they can do to accommodate this change. Hudson News, in fact, wants to invest heavily into the airport again uh, because we've asked them to relocate their site. We also want them to expand their footprint. They have a very small footprint over there and 60% of our passengers. So uh, about what, 350, 450,000 passengers go through that terminal undersized. So it gives them the opportunity to expand that footprint. Um, as part of that exchange, we are negotiating potentially increases in length of time, which we think is very fair. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of investment. Um, uh, and then the big project, uh, what we call the North Renovation, this is the $35 million earmark that we're, we're moving forward with. Uh, it has still not passed legislation yet, so that still has to be moved forward. Um, uh, we're expecting that to occur early in 2023. However, we want to be prepared. There's slight risk associated with the design work, but uh, there's also risk if we don't move this forward that we potentially could miss some, some deadlines. Uh, so we're, we're moving forward with a very small scope of work to start the initial design of the North renovation, which is the demolition of gates three, four, five, and six, the small wing of the North Concourse, and a uh, uh, renovation re rehab moving towards the air traffic control building and expanding it. So it'll look very similar uh, to what we just finished building, but just on the plan. Uh, lots of work. We're, we're talking a few years in front of us before we're shovels in the ground, uh, but we're getting closer and closer every day. A um, few years before shovels in the ground. Yeah, I think realistically, 2024 will we'll we'll start. start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, that might be, yeah, I think realistically that, that's appropriate. Um, that's if we hit those thresholds of, of legislation. Having the bill signed by the president, going through FAA, going through grant applications, getting it executed. 
Um, we are looking at alternatives on how we did this as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we you remember how we did this project over here, which uh, Larry, what was it? What was the type we of uh, we had, did design build on on the um, uh, tip project? Code. Yeah, which was great from a cash flow perspective. We only had to design approximately thirty percent, and then we applied for the grant. Typically, the FNA requires one hundred percent of design, which could be a ten percent uh, share. And in a case like this, for a fourteen fifteen million dollar project, we're talking about one point five million dollars before we even have a grant. And, uh, we're trying to look at alternatives for the scenario up on the north uh, again, so we can analyze the cash flow scenario and make sure we're not moving too far. Design and build, however, requires extremely stringent bid requirements. Uh, most difficultly, it requires minimum three competitive bids. That is going to be very hard. In fact, it was very hard on this project right here. Um, and if you don't have three competitive bids, you have to start the process essentially over or continue to the, the design work. So we're a lot of work with the FAA to, to move this forward and, and complete support by the FAA as well. Uh, hotel, um, uh, I, in past meetings, I did advise that we were hopeful to get this started in the fall. Uh, we've hit uh, a couple of snacks, uh, so it will not be started this year. Uh, we are working with the hotel company, the new partnership, and uh, it, it's better than ever. And there is a partner of the hotel, and uh, we're excited to put that forward because we will need a, uh, a ground lease amendment eventually. Uh, and the site plan looks the same, and everything essentially looks the same. There might be some permit uh, adjustments that we might have to make. Uh, we're, we're looking at sometime next year, but done uh, unknown at this time. Uh, we are making progress uh, compared to where we were. Uh, and then just a few staff ac uh, accomplishments. Um, we are getting ready for winter season, unfortunately. Uh, and so Dave and his crew, Shelby and her crew, uh, and the maintenance team are, are really cleaning up, getting our snow equipment ready to go. They're working extremely hard, still long hours. We're still painting, doing a lot of work in the terminal. Uh, rain doesn't help when we have to when we have to readjust. But uh, lots of things happening, and I just wanted to note that uh, how, how incredibly uh, hard everybody is working right now. Um, uh, we had a recent, another recent retirement. Uh, Brian Kosowski, uh, he, he's been with the airport just a few years. Uh, uh, we have advertisements right now for two new positions. Sorry, not new, but two positions, two vacant positions. Uh, one is a uh, electrician, and one is a maintenance worker. Um, uh, Brian was our previous electrician. Uh, we have two master electricians, uh, so we're, we're, uh, we're, we're uh, actively advertising them. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, the reason that uh, Dave and Hannah were digitally uh, this past Monday, they were representing the Burlington Airport at uh, probably one of the largest conferences in the country, uh, hosted by Airport Council's International North America chapter. Uh, the 2,000, I think you said 2, two or 2,500 um, attendees. So Dave and Hannah just came back from Minneapolis at one o'clock this morning. Uh, <laughs> I didn't tell them they had to come in. Today. <laughs> uh, but they said it was an awesome conference. I don't know if they were here and we want to mention anything, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm jealous. That's all. <laughs> I had something else to do on Monday. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. We'll move on to item 1101, follow up items. So, this goes to the public right now orientation. And I know that the city legal staff is, is pretty thin these days. So I'm curious if there's any update as to when we might see them. Um, I think since the last time we spoke, we had another attorney head to the state of Vermont. So, we um, are pretty lean and mean, but that's okay. Um, so is it three, three or two at this point? There are three, okay. yes, three attorneys in the, in the city attorney's office right now. Uh, I think three or four vacancies. Um, uh, so it, it is difficult to, to, uh, to schedule this with them right now. 
uh, I did, uh, I think either Nan or Shelby uh, mentioned it to you. Uh, we do have an outside counsel that could potentially come in and brief all of you on public right to know Robert's um, maybe Robert's rules of order. That's that's the Pentagon if, if that's what you want. And uh, of course, the public uh, public meeting laws, uh, which I think would be important. Uh, so we can we can start working uh, with them on that if, if, if you wish. Uh, just to advise because of the limitations. Uh, and, and don't get me wrong, we still get incredible amount of service from the city attorney's office, uh, but there are some very specific uh, outside counsel needs from the airport right now. So we do have uh, a little bit more outside counsel than we used to on various projects. And, and that's okay. Um, uh, and of course, everything still goes through city attorney's office. Uh, and All right, so item 12 is the executive session. Uh, we actually need a motion to enter into executive session. So does someone want to make the motion to go into executive session to discuss a real estate lease negotiation? I'm open to go into executive session to discuss real estate lease negotiation. Jeff is moved. Do I hear a second? Second. And all those in favor of moving into executive session, please subscribe by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we just need to disconnect the channel 17 or mute or something, and then we can begin. Um, so we have a separate Zoom link. Uh, okay. It's only uh, Dave and Larry on right now. Okay. So they'll join us on a separate Zoom link, and uh, okay. it's it's up to you and other boards that I'm associated with. Usually we we have the executive session at the end. We'll come out of the executive session. And then adjourn after, yes. Okay.